So hey everyone, today I'm here at Gumroad HQ in San Francisco. I'm sitting here with Ryan Delk, who's the business development lead here. And we're gonna to talk to a little bit about what Gumroad is and how you can use it to sell your products and information online. So thanks for joining me today, Ryan. Absolutely, thanks for having me. So how did you end up here at Gumroad? Yeah, so I was, um, I was in school at the University of Florida. Um, I was involved in some different startup stuff, um, some venture capital stuff, some startups. Um, spent a summer in Nairobi working with startups in Kenya and um, was working for Square remotely while I was at school, doing some stuff with them, was really interested in payments. Um, and then I came across uh, Sahil, the founder of Gumroad's uh, blog post about Gumroad and some stuff on Hacker News. Um, reached out to him, we had coffee, and just kind of enjoyed it and kind of went from there. And so what do you do here at Gumroad? Yeah, so I do all of our like growth, partnerships, business development stuff. So anything that has to do with growing Gumroad, um, I'm focused on two things mostly. One is you know getting more volume through the system, so that means you know more people selling content, more people buying content, figuring out ways that we can convert people better, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is kind of building our brand within the kind of content verticals that we're really focused on. So um, you know for creatives that are selling content, um, for musicians in the music industry, um, and then for kind of everything in between with filmmakers, with software developers, with um, you know ebook authors, with everything, um, kind of building our brand within those verticals to be really effective and to be kind of a brand that's known for empowering content creators. Okay. And so for people not familiar with Gumroad, what is it and what makes it different from something like PayPal or eJunkie or some other payment processor for digital goods? Yeah. So Gumroad is the simplest way to sell anything directly to your audience. So um, what we want to be is we want to be a platform that empowers creatives to be able to sell the stuff they make and not have to worry about everything that goes into the actual transaction process mm -hmm. and the whole process of actually selling content and allow them just to focus on creating that content. So what that means is that we, you know, we handle all the kind of complicated stuff that is like really difficult to plan and think about. So things like payment processing, things like hosting the content, serving the download securely, analytics on all your buyers, mm -hmm. um, you know, th things like recommendations to increase conversions, handling, you know, embedding a Vimeo, you know, video here, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we're trying to do more and more of that. So um, now we do a lot of stuff around email where you can email updates to your buyers. And we really just want to be a comprehensive platform that allows you know, anyone who's selling and anyone who's creating content to sell it directly to their audience. And we'll get into a lot of the features later, but something I saw that was cool that you guys do is you can pre-sell stuff and then when you're ready to launch it, you just email all the people that bought and it's really easy. Yeah. As opposed to having to add them on some separate email list, just through Gumroad you can email them right. directly. So you can update your file at any time, and that's how. Or that too, use revision previews, updates right. or typos or things like that. So it's the same feature that people use for both of those. And then as soon as you update it, whether that be from a pre-order to the actual release or you know V2, V3, you can just inline just click email customers. So we email them all their download link, and they can get the latest version. So who are who are some of the, your clients? Who are some of your bigger name people, and then some of your you know. Maybe not A-list people, but that do really well with Gumroad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we. I mean, Gumroad was definitely built for the indie creators. I mean, that's and that's still kind of what we're geared towards. Um, it, it so happens that the platform is really interesting and works really well for a lot of people across a very broad scale. Um, but the people that kind of we build Gumroad for are the independent content creators who are writing books, making films, developing software, Photoshop plugins, whatever it may be, and have an audience of some sort, whether that be on social media, whether that be on their blog, whether that be on an email newsletter, and they want to sell that content to them. Mm -hmm. um, so we have you know independent authors um, like Nathan Berry is a great example, your friend, um, and you know we worked a lot with him on some of his books, and uh, he uses Gumroad for a wide variety of things. Um, we have a lot of kind of like larger kind of artists and people that use this. So the guys like Coldplay, Wiz Khalifa, Eminem, um, Ellie Goulding, Bon Jovi. Uh, so we do a lot of stuff for the entertainment industry, and then kind of everything in between there. So a lot of films that have you know played Sundance, and then you know are selling the soundtrack and the film on Gumroad, mm -hmm. um, and then all the way down to you know moms selling cookbooks to their <laughs> friends on Facebook, and everything in between. And so why would a big name artist like Coldplay or something go through you guys as opposed to iTunes? Yeah. Is so it a percentage. Yeah, so it's a lot of things. It's mostly the money and the data, um, but they also, you know, it's just a much simpler transaction flow. Um, the world doesn't revolve around Apple necessarily, so lots of people have Android phones. Mm -hmm. If they're on Twitter and they see an iTunes link, they can't do anything. Um, so Gumroad gives kind of a universal way for anyone to transact, no matter where they are. 
and you know the economics are much better. So we take five percent plus twenty five cents, and you know iTunes takes thirty. Amazon, depending on what you're selling, takes between thirty and fifty, um, and other platforms, the economic breakdown is pretty similar. So they like all the getting a much more like larger chunk of the revenue, but they also like getting all the data. So we expose this really robust seller dashboard with um, you know location information to all the buyers, all the email addresses, conversion data from every refer, and broken down by total revenue, conversions, total views, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that allows them to really tailor their marketing efforts, specifically if you're a musician that's you know planning a tour and you have all this location information about where all your fans are about who are buying your content it allows you to do a lot of really intelligent and cool things with marketing around that that's really cool and so when when there is something that someone wants to sell how quickly can they get it up how complicated it is to upload a PDF or maybe it's that and an mp3 file or a video and like how difficult is the process of setting it all up? Yeah, so that's one thing we really focus on is simplicity. So um, kind of from deciding that you want to sell something on Gumroad to actually having a purchase link ready to go, um, kind of the bare minimum, you could be ready in 90 seconds. So you literally, you, ch you know, type in a title, you upload the content, um, and then you set a price and you click create and you have a purchase link. So that's kind of, you're ready to go at that point and then you can add a description, kind of a preview image, um, and even with adding all of that, you're still only talking about maybe five or ten minutes, mm -hmm. and then you're ready to go. And you can embed it on your website, you can put it on Facebook and Twitter, an email newsletter, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And you can do you can do different packages, you can do different prices, and there's something cool that you guys do where you can do like the dollar amount and then plus. So, so it's a variable price. So talk about some examples of people using that. Yeah, so um, we encourage both of those things. So we really encourage kind of bundling different levels of content because everyone, no matter who you are, no matter how small your audience is, you have people that are kind of on this, this spectrum of interest in your content. And so people that are just kind of like, oh, I might check this out, maybe mm -hmm. I'll purchase it, to you know, whatever Caleb puts out, I'm buying it 100%. I don't care what it is, like, I'm buying it. Mm -hmm. And for those people, you want to kind of get the market at equilibrium and you want to give them the opportunity to spend as much money as they want to spend. And so um, Nathan Berry, who I mentioned earlier, is a great example of this, a bundling. So he, whenever he releases a book, he has three tiers. And so he has just the PDF, which might be you know, 20, 30 bucks. And then he has this kind of mid-tier that includes like some video content, um, some sort of kind of exclusive kind of things that you wouldn't get in the normal tier, and that might be 60 or 70. And then he has this tier that some people look at and think it's crazy, but he actually makes most of his money, and I think some releases, 60, 70% of his income come from this upper tier, which is like $250. Mm -hmm. And it'll include like Photoshop, you know, mock-ups of the things he talks about in the book, all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff, videos. Um, and that's kind of something that we really encourage is kind of having these bundled, tiered kind of models for no matter what you are, whether you're an artist, and this works, Bon Jovi did this when he sold his stuff through Gumroad. You know, it works across the board and it works really well. What were some of his tiers? So he did um, just the album, and then he did the album plus a t-shirt plus an iPhone case, and then he did for like $490, <laughs> you could get a autographed CD from Bon Jovi. And I mean, same thing with him. Most of his revenue, you know, is coming from these big top tier packages. Interesting. And so, what are some other features of Gumroad? I know PDF stamping is one. If you yeah. want to talk about that, what are some other your differentiating features? Yeah. So we focus a lot on trying to figure out ways to make it as simple as possible for the buyer and as simple as possible for the seller, while still keeping everything secure. Um, so PDF stamping is one of the things we do that, you know, we don't do like a formal DRM on everything. Everything is DRM free, mm -hmm. but um, for PDF specifically, we'll stamp the buyer information to every page. So, you know, it's just kind of an added level of security for the seller. Um, it also kind of customizes each, you know, purchase for the buyer. So some of the buyers actually really like it as well. Um, so that's one of the things we do for authors. We also work really hard on integrations. So we've integrated with lots of platforms, um, SoundCloud, YouTube, Twitter, um, done some stuff with Facebook, and we're really trying to just become basically you know, wherever these people's audience is, wherever mm -hmm. their, you know, wherever their audience is looking at their content, we want to make it as simple as possible for them to transact there. So we've worked hard on integration with YouTube, so you can put Gumroad links into annotations of YouTube videos. Um, on Twitter, we're a launch partner for their new product cards. So you have, you know, when someone tweets a Gumroad link and you click on that tweet on Twitter.com, it expands and you have the product card there that gives information, has a video preview, all embedded on Twitter.com. That's pretty um, awesome. So that's something we work on, and that's kind of, you know, the, the creators and the people that are using Gumroad don't do anything to get that. Like, that just happens. Um, and it's just kind of an added benefit of, you know, using Gumroad. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's endless possibilities with that. Like, specifically YouTube, you could have a launch trailer for, I don't know, a documentary, a book, or something like that. Exactly. And in the annotation, you could put, buy it right here, and you could just go and could buy it right away. Exactly. Patrick Vlaskovitz, who wrote um, The Lean Entrepreneur, which launched, uh, I think, earlier this year, 
um, as kind of a follow-up to Eric Reese's book on you know the lean startup. Um, and we we worked with him on that, and he did that exact same thing. So he had a, a launch trailer that was on YouTube, um, and he embedded that on all the blogs that talked. To, he told everyone to embed it on all the blogs. He embedded it on his website. He embedded it on all the Gumroad products, and it turned out to be his number one traffic refer for all of his sales. I think was this launch trailer was the annotation with this annotation in. So that's crazy. Yeah. What are some other examples of people like Bon Jovi? I know you are working with like Snoop Dogg too. Like we're talking to his team. Yeah, we haven't done anything with him yet, but. <laughs> So, is it, cool. so are you trying to branch out into, like, sounds like music artists is like a big example because yeah. they're trying to get more of their income. What are some other examples? Are you working with many like independent filmmakers or things like that? Yeah, so we do a lot of stuff with independent filmmakers. Um, probably my favorite example is a group that did a, uh, a documentary on fixed gear bikes on fixies <laughs> uh, in Bristol. And if that's they, not San Francisco, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they'd made this documentary and it's actually a really amazing documentary. Um, and they, they have this beautiful website and they, they just put together this package and it includes like a, the, the kind of HD documentary and then it includes um, I think like the soundtrack and then a behind the scenes kind of sneak peek thing. Um, and they just kind of bundled it all together and put it on Gumroad and it ended up being this really, really, you know, kind of a perfect fit and a really good use case for them and it worked really well for us. Um, and so we have lots of people like that who, you know, are creating content, whether that be, you know, films, whether that be software, Photoshop plugins are really big actually. So mm -hmm. people developing brush packs for Photoshop or a plugin to, you know, do some sort of external feature that Photoshop doesn't have. Um, that's a huge vertical for us. And so things like that where, you know, it'd be really difficult to kind of set up a store to power those sales, mm -hmm. um, but it kind of, you know, allows you to, you know, really, really simply and really, really easily get that stuff to your audience, allow them to transact and purchase mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And so do most of the people that do really well with sales already have an audience? And if they do, what's the best way to capitalize on the audience? Yeah, so um, it's definitely, we haven't found any correlation between any strong correlation between like number of Twitter followers and volume by any means, um, which is actually interesting because I assumed that like you know our biggest sellers would be the people with the biggest Twitter followings and mm -hmm. Facebook followings and stuff, um, but we found that that those are they're almost like vanity metrics now like they almost don't matter, mm -hmm. um, and so when you have these these kind of especially the independent content creators and we have independent guys who have made more money than a lot of the big name like celebrities that yeah. I've name dropped you know. Um, and that's just the reality because you have these celebrities that may have you know tens or even hundreds of millions of people that are subscribed to them from various online channels, but they're not very engaged. You know, they're just another artist that they like. Whereas if I have an independent author that I really enjoy, and he has a you know very kind of cultivated, tight knit community, and that might be you know a thousand followers on Twitter, nine hundred friends on Facebook, an email newsletter of nine hundred people, and then you know maybe a thousand blog subscribers. And I can give them content that 50, 60, 70 percent of these people are going to enjoy, and I know they're going to want to buy. Mm -hmm. That's super valuable. And what we've seen is that the people that actually are the most successful are the ones that have these really tight knit, really engaged communities, and then learn how to give content and deliver content that those people like. And so, um, you know, independent authors like Nathan Berry. Um, there's a guy, Danny Greenfield, who sells a book on Python and um, Django, like, or uh, yeah, Django, like. I don't know, it's like a tutorial book. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, these type of guys that have this really tight-knit community are actually way more successful. And there's, there's two things that I think work really, really well. The first is having a plan to not just launch cold. So a lot of people will just write the book and then they'll mock up a website. They'll emerge from. Right, exactly, from nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and um, even if it's just a very simple splash page that just says, hey, this is what I'm doing, you know, and just kind of drive some awareness, um, that works really well. And that's something that we've seen kind of move the needle. And specifically, if you can, Getting people to give you their email address, um, that's something I know you guys do a lot, is like give you someone to give you their email address in exchange for some piece of content. So maybe you give them like the first chapter, maybe you give them uh, you know, a five page overview of what the book's gonna be about. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just totally unrelated content that you give them, but you give them some piece of content in exchange for giving you their email address that they're interested. And then you're building this list of people who have self-curated themselves and said, hey, I wanna hear more about this content. And that email list we've seen to be a massive driver of sales, specifically if it's the one that's tailored to, these are people that want this or are interested in this. But even if it's not, if you have an existing email list, it converts 10, 15 times better than anything you'll see on Facebook or Twitter. Um, and that's just still the reality of, mm -hmm. you know, social just isn't there compared to email yet. Um, so that's, that's kind of the biggest thing I would say is have a launch page and get email newsletters if you can, like email addresses to, you know, blast out to. But the second thing that um, Nathan, that um, Daniel, who I mentioned, have done is blog throughout the process. So 
and this is another way to get more email addresses too. Mm -hmm. And so have, you know, write a blog post once a week about how the book's going. What are you writing? What, what chapters have you finished? What are some questions you've uncovered? Who are you talking to? Things that are interesting. Um, and Nathan kind of takes us to the extreme where he's blogging about designing the splash page and doing like a YouTube tutorial on that. And, mm -hmm. and it's awesome because he gets way more engagement than anyone else would get. Um, but giving people, kind of allowing them to walk with you through that process, it, it gets them kind of more engaged and almost has, there's like this buy-in feeling of like, I've been, you know, I've been kind of with him on this journey or with her on this journey and, and now I want to actually, you know, transact and purchase that content. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something, those two things have really moved the needle for a lot of authors and, and other people as well. What do you guys do to protect like the download link? Yeah. Because I know that's something you guys do. Absolutely, yeah. This is, the entertainment industry is like, just absolutely absurdly obsessed with this. So yeah, we uh, we do a couple of things. So we have a ton of like kind of um, risk algorithms on the back end. So when we when we host the content and we serve that download to the user, that's a unique download link. And so we track um, everything about location, who's clicking on it, where they're clicking on it from, mm -hmm. how long from purchase to when they clicked on it. Um, and the big thing we do is we look at referrer data. And so when you purchase something on Gumroad, you get a email receipt on the web um, right after the purchase. So you can click and download, and then you get a receipt via email that you can click and download from. But both of those, the referrer data is Gumroad. Um, and so we always look for the referrer, and if it's not Gumroad, we're not gonna let you in because that means you forwarded it on, you've copied right, and pasted right. the link, whatever. And that, that gets 99.999% of it. Stops most of them. And we do them. Yeah. a lot of stuff on the other end to catch the 0.01%. Gotcha. And so one of the best parts I think of Gumroad is like the UI and how it's just embedded into your own site and you don't have to leave to go to PayPal or some other yeah. place. And so what are some of the little tricks that you guys have where people don't have to put in their name or their address and stuff like that and how hard have you worked to get to that point? Yeah. So um, kind of I think a lot of the impetus for Gumroad was we just felt like commerce was really broken. And so um, when Saha was initially designing Gumroad, like, we, I think he and, and the whole team really thinks about this as like, you know, w the paradigm for commerce has been the same for like 20 years on the web and like no one's really rethought it. Like why do we have shopping carts? Why is there like a multi-page checkout process? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the way that it had to be back when, you know, it was really risky to process credit cards online. But no one's really said, okay, now that we have all this new technology, what can we do now that mm -hmm. we couldn't do then? And so we have um, Tuin is a, one of our data guys who's amazing at risk stuff and just absolutely as, blown us all away and, and he talks to other data people who are just blown away with what he does as well. Um, but he, he's designed all sorts of algorithms that allow us basically to, to, to require way less information than most people do and still have you know, incredibly low chargeback rates and really, really high levels of fraud and risk protection. Um, and so that allows us to have this really simple purchase UI. And that's like, that's really, I mean, that's, that's what Gumroad's all about is really that purchase experience. Um, and, and we try to really focus on seller stuff as well. But at the end of the day, if you can deliver buyers a really simple experience to purchase and one that works really well on mobile, really well on tablets, really well on desktop, and is optimized for all those experiences. Yeah, that's another key thing is the yeah. mobile is really slick. That's huge. Because I mean, especially if you're promoting on Twitter, like people aren't on Twitter on their computers, they're mm -hmm. on their phones. And if they need to click on your link to buy your book, they need to be able to type of that information right there and purchase in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's kind of our, our big thing is really figuring out how can we simplify this. And um, we're working on some really cool stuff on mobile that'll that'll optimize it even further that we can talk about in a few weeks, hopefully. Um, but yeah, just the, we want to deliver the simplest possible purchase experience. And, you know, so the, the bare minimum is email address and credit card information, that's it. So if you want to, you can sell stuff on Gumroad and only require that. And you can add as many fields as you want. Um, like you but, could add more if you're selling something physical, yeah. you need t-shirt size or something like that. Yeah, or just anything custom that you want. Like if you want to require their a phone number or a name or whatever, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of all we require. And and because of a lot of the really complicated stuff we do on the back end, we're able to present this really simple user experience. Uh, that's, I mean, the quote that everyone talks about, like simple is actually very complicated. Mm -hmm. And to the buyer, they think, oh, this is so simple, this is so easy. And on the back end, it's very, very difficult to deliver that in a way that's sustainable and that you know protects the sellers. Um, but it's it's amazing, it's awesome that we've gotten to that point where we can do that. And you know the conversion rates are way higher on Gumroad because of it. Mm -hmm. And so what are some like upcoming features to Gumroad you guys are working on? Is it like affiliate in a yeah. way or recurring payments or what kind of things? Yeah, so both of those we're working on uh, or thinking about at least. So recurring we're, we're working on. We definitely, um, there's kind of this huge need for people that have you know a really engaged community who want to you know set up some sort of monthly thing where they can deliver content to them. And we want to keep that really broad. We don't want to, you know, kind of like box it into just magazines or just music fan clubs. Um, and we actually want to open up kind of this new model where people can almost have like a microtransaction model where for like a dollar or two dollars a month, 
um, you know, almost like one level above following someone on Twitter or following mm -hmm. their blog, where like for two dollars a month, you know, maybe someone just takes all their kind of random Photoshop designs and just dumps them into their Gumroad account. And for two dollars a month, I can subscribe to kind of get all this cool little, you know, tidbits that they weren't ever going to use or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe they write a couple, you know, essays a month, and I can subscribe to that. Or a writer, I can subscribe to, you know, PDF scans of their notebook or something. Um, and I think that people that have, you know, a few thousand people that would pay them, you know, two, three, four dollars a month for this type of stuff, I think that's really interesting, and that's going to create a lot of new revenue models for creators. Yeah, I could see like a like a big name author, exactly, like yeah. taking pictures of like all of his brainstorming ideas. Exactly, people would go crazy over yeah. that for like the next Game of Thrones book or something exactly. like that. Yeah. And they have these really engaged communities, but like there's really no tier above. Like the only tier above following someone on Twitter is just buying, buying their the stuff when it comes out, yeah. which is like you know it's it's fine, but it's only once every eighteen months. Um, so, but then we also want to support like kind of the more traditional, like a music fan club or like a magazine, um, you know, a weekly TV series or something like that. Um, so we're definitely working on recurring and, and hope to have that very soon by the time this this airs. Um, and then affiliates, we're thinking hard about. Um, we want to do it in a way that is more. We'll probably you know be more like tastemakers um, and kind of a more toned down version where you can you know if you have ten or fifteen people that you want to you know be able to reward for sharing your content, you can give them those links and it's all automated, but not kind of a full blown like affiliate system. Mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely something we want to do, both for like independent creators and authors, and for you know labels and management companies who have artists that want to cross promote and things like that, which mm -hmm. I think is. Super exciting because you can't really do that now with existing platforms. Awesome. So if someone wants to just even test out Gumroad, they don't have to even try to charge for anything. They should just sit down, make something, maybe record audio or video or something. Yeah. Put up for free, and you can just say zero dollars or zero plus or something just to test out the platform. I would recommend people do that. Yeah. So you can go to Gumroad.com, um, and there's at the top of our homepage there's a demo that you can walk through, um, and you can kind of see what the purchase flow. You can buy Alice in Wonderland for free. It's our present to everyone. Um, <laughs> And you can test the purchase flow. You can see kind of how it feels. And then at the end of that, you can sign up. It I, literally takes 90 seconds to sign up. You can upload your first product, test out the flow, see how things are. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we exist to empower content creators. So we're, that's what we're all about. And if there's you know, ways that we can do that better, we'd love to hear them. And feedback from anyone, definitely welcome. Yeah, and speaking of feedback, like your support is really great. I mean, you're, you're a small team. And compared to some of the bigger companies that process payments yeah. that are impossible to get in touch with. Like, it's great to just email somebody. And even if it's like late at night, it's like somebody's there and they like respond. And yeah, so. we try really hard to be, like, I think our goal is like 30 minutes during uh, week, weekday Jeez. hours, like to have support, <laughs> support responses back. And we're on, we're constantly like, we have all these searches up for Facebook and Twitter, like for Gumroad tweets and people are talking about Gumroad. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that's one of our things. We try to make sure that every buyer is satisfied. And we also handle the customer support for our sellers. So we, so if you're selling something, if someone has buying issues, you don't have to worry about troubleshooting. Like, we'll handle all that. Gotcha. Um, so that's really valuable. And we try to also, like, if we can go out of our way to make their experience better, even if it means us refunding a purchase out of our, you know, out of Gumroad's account and not out of the seller's account or something, mm -hmm. we always want to do that because at the end of the day, we want to, if we can make your buyers happy for you, that's a better experience for you. And we think that's part of kind of our responsibility as a payments platform to be more than just like this kind of, okay, well, here you go, take it, and you deal with support and everything. We want to kind of bring all that in house. And especially the experiences people have with PayPal and a lot of other payment processors, we, you know, we want Gummer to be the complete opposite of that. A lot of what Amazon has done with mm -hmm. commerce, I think, is a great example of just delivering incredible customer experiences. Mm -hmm. And there's one more thing that I forgot to touch on is your work with charities. Yeah. So if you want to talk about that for a minute. Yeah, so um, actually yesterday, it was amazing, um, uh, one of our favorite comic book authors who sells on Gumroad, um, yesterday there was the, the tragedy at the Boston Marathon, and um, he designed a wallpaper um, that was like one of his characters from his comics that was really like a really famous character and he designed this wallpaper and um, It was kind of available for he, he, I don't know I think he just put it together and he's kind of running the characters like running across a marathon And he just he was able just to make it in like maybe an hour or two and then upload it to Gumroad right away and start selling it And so you know two and a half hours after the news broke we saw this tweet that was like support um, You know all the support the Boston Marathon victims all the donations go to like the Red Cross and a hospital mm -hmm. in Boston and he tweeted it, and no press, no nothing. And I was at a meeting, I came back, and he, there was already thousands of dollars being processed through um, for these charities. And so we- And we do you guys some, have it tied, or are you working on tying it up so it goes directly to that charity? 
Yeah, so we're, we're, we definitely want to serve nonprofits better. Right mm -hmm. now, you can do the payout to whoever you want. So you can, a lot of people will just have the payout, either the PayPal or the ACH account that's paid out to just be the charity. Gotcha. So we did some stuff for the New York Mayor's Fund after um, the hurricane in New York, Hurricane Sanity, um, with an awesome music group who put on a benefit concert and sold DVDs. And we did that. We donated directly to the fund. So there's mm -hmm. no kind of tax issues around R yeah. going through the seller and then. Yeah. And, so, absolutely. Well, cool. Well, thanks for joining me today. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Mm.